is God's tool for the total transformation of one's destiny. Get ready to encounter truth as you listen to this timely message by God's veritable servant, Prophet Eric Oglu Pasley. And he said, as he is, so are we. Where is he now? Is he sick? I can't be sick. Is he poor? I can't be poor. I am robbers after him. I am robbers cannot be after me. Because as I behold him, as he is, so am I. That is a message of the scripture. When you point to him, Jesus Christ, he said, my sheep, they know me and they hear my voice. And nobody can pluck them out of my hands. So that means that nobody who wants to kill me can kill me. Because I am hidden in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. It is in him I move and live and have my breath. I prophesy over your life. Anything running after your life, today it is over. The Bible is a Christocentric book with a Christocentric message. The Bible is not because you can't peer anybody to a gem. Hell is locked. Mommy, I used to ask myself a question. Assuming I went to slap somebody 20 years ago and the person was praying for me to die, would God have answered that prayer? Because God knew that a time will come, he will use me to lead people to his kingdom. So, you don't, the Bible said that the grace of God has appeared to all men, including the fetish priest. The grace of God is over his life. The problem is that he has not realized that the grace of God is there and then he will respond in faith to it. And salvation will happen. Pa. So rather than spending all your time praying for your uncle to die, spend all your time knowing Christ and when you know him, the kind of impact you make, your uncle will be brought to Christ through you. Because God is patient wanting everyone to come to repentance. Because if we are busily killing people, we are not different from fetish priests. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his root, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, I'm just reading the verse 2 to make you understand who Isaiah was prophesying about. Are you here? That is why I said that the Old Testament is full of shadows. That is why even the prophets, when they prophesy, they did not know what they were saying. Do you know one of the problems of John the Baptist? One of the problems of John the Baptist was that his only assignment in life was to announce the Messiah. And when he announced the Messiah, he should have closed his ministry. But when John the Baptist announced the Messiah, he was still baptizing people somewhere. Because, listen, the person that came after the order of Elijah was John the Baptist. That means that the same way Elijah caught fire from heaven, John the Baptist also had that capacity. But he was incapacitated at that time because his mission statement has finished. In other words, whatever assignment God gave him, he had finished the assignment. You don't know how power, powerless a man is until the man is outside his God-ordained assignment. So Isaiah began to prophesy and say there is a rod that is coming from the stem of Jesse. So typology, in typology, that rod was Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was a type of the rod. Christ was that rod that came from the stem of Jesse. So in typology, I am not saying Christ is a typical rock, but in typology, it was it, it is a metaphor of, of the rod was a metaphor of who 
Christ was is and the assignment Christ was about to accomplish. Now, let's go back to Exodus. When you go to Exodus, when God sent Moses to go into the land of Egypt to go and free the people of Israel, listen to me, Exodus, the, the account of the Israelites in the camp of the Egyptian was a type of what happened when Adam sinned against God and the devil took over. The devil was a type of Pharaoh. Egypt was a type of the kingdom of darkness. The Israelites were a type of the present day church. So, this is what happened. God, the children of Israel sinned against God. God allowed them to go into slavery just like Adam disobeyed God and when Adam disobeyed God the devil began to rule over man. An angel appeared to Moses in the bush and I think that I have established here that the man that appeared to Moses in the bush is not God. I've given you scriptures in the book of Acts. I gave you about three scriptures to prove that. I have four scriptures. I gave you two scriptures in the book of Acts. And then I gave you a scripture in Hebrews and Galatians. The book of Galatians. That the angel that appeared in the bush was not God. But it was an angel. Because Moses was a dead man. Moses was a dead man. You know why Moses was a dead man? He was not born again. And he couldn't understand spiritual things. That is why the day Moses said, I want to see you God. God says you don't understand. You are under the law. You are the originator of the law. You are the CEO of the law. You can't be under the law and see me. But let me go into time and do something. I'm going to hide you under the rock. And Christ was that rock. I'm going to hide you in the cliff of the rock. In other words, I will hide you in Christ. Then you see my back. That was how Moses was able to write the book of Genesis. Listen. The birth, death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the whole eternity compressed into three days. Bible interprets Bible. Okay? How you build a doctrine is when you, you are able to come up with about three or four scriptures that are talking about the same thing, then you are able to build a doctrine on a subject. Is that okay? Now, the Bible is trying to tell us here that Isaiah is prophesying that a time is coming a rod will come out of the stem of Jesse. And we know that Christ came out of the root of Jesse. Now, when Moses was sent to go into the land of Egypt to deliver the people of Israel, just like the assignment of God on the earth was to come in the form of a man to come and free his people. Moses was also sent like that to free the people of God. Now, when Moses entered, now let me let me give you a, 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 a graphic picture. Do you know that when Moses entered Israel, he performed a, mir a lot of miracles, but Pharaoh never allowed his people to go. Just like when Christ came upon the earth, he performed a lot of miracles, changed water into wine. He did a lot of things, but the devil was still in charge. It was only when the lamp was killed and the blood was applied on the doorpost. That was the day the whole of Pharaoh was broken over the people of Israel. Just like when Christ walked upon the earth, he did a lot of miracles. But the day he died and resurrected, the whole of the devil was broken. And when the whole of the and Pharaoh was broken in that day. Pharaoh still pursued them. And when Pharaoh pursued them, God told Moses, he said, why are you crying to me? That means that now, 
I have fought the battle for you. For you to defeat the devil now, it depends on you. You have the capacity to defend, defeat the devil. Just like when Christ said it is finished, everything you need to live a life of goodness is in you. So that is why Peter wrote and said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. Okay, so let's come back to the text. So when you look at Exodus chapter 7 verse 9 to 11, it began to talk about Aaron and Moses appeared before Pharaoh. And when Aaron and Moses appeared before Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Aaron cast his rod on the ground and the rod became a snake. Mommy, I asked myself a question. Why is it that the rod did not become a lamb? Why did, it, did, did the rod not, not become? Because that is the place, that is one of the places where Christ was typified as a serpent. And I will explain why. Because when you look at when you look at Christ and the things he was typified with in terms of his death, a lamp in terms of his attitude and his character, he behaves like a lion sometimes. A lamp. Because he was going to be crucified. But in this, the, in this, in the Old Testament, Christ was li likened to the serpent. And the serpent is all, has everything to do with the devil. Am I making sense? So, why, why didn't the, the rod become a lion or become anything else apart from a serpent. And the Bible said that when the, the rod became a serpent, the Pharaoh also called his magician. And his magician also threw their rod down and their rods became a serpent. But the king serpent swallowed up all the other serpent. What does that mean? The serpent is a prototype of sin. So, when Heron picked the rod and threw it on the ground and the rod was a prototype of Christ, that was when he threw it on the ground and Christ became a snake, God was trying to give a picture of redemption to Pharaoh and the devil but they couldn't see. When the rod became a serpent, that serpent was seen. In other words, Christ became Sin in order to swallow up sin. I don't know who I'm preaching to. That, that was a playback or that was a movie of what Christ was about to do. He became, why did he become a serpent? He became a serpent because the serpent was a prototype of sin. And sin was reigning. When sin came, death reigned. So when Christ as the rod was on the ground, he swallowed up sin. In other words, he's trying to paint a picture that a time is coming after certain years, I am going to die on the cross. And when I die on the cross, I will take your sin. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Listen. Your sins have been swallowed by Christ. That is what the Bible said. The wages of sin is death. Sin and death, they work together. And if Christ has dealt with death and sin, that means that every form of death in your life is fired for misoccupation. Why didn't he become a lamb? That he became a serpent. In other words, Christ became the devil to save us from the devil. He who knew no sin was made sin for us. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. That is why I will never allow the devil accuse me. Because anybody who can accuse a person is the man without sin. But the devil is the king. He's a sinner. So he has no moral right to accuse me. I am the free son of God. Christ came to be seen for me. I don't know who I'm preaching to.
it to this one. So you see, do you know that in the Old Testament, everything in the Old Testament can be acted by Sunday school drama. But when you come from act to revelation, there is nothing there that can be acted. Because everything from act to revelation is revelation. And you don't act revelation. You can't act revelation. You don't act it. You can act the historical books of the humanity of Jesus Christ. You can act everything about Noah's act. But you can never act. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Because it doesn't come with a birth certificate. I don't know who I'm preaching to. He doesn't. Why are you allowing the devil to afflict you? Listen. Every serpent of the enemy in your life, today, after today, it shall be swallowed up. I don't like your enemy. I say it shall be swallowed up. Generational poverty in your life has been swallowed up. Generational diseases and sickness in your body has been swallowed up. It was a typology of what Christ was about to do. Oh, I love this God. Even where I, I was not formed, even where I was nowhere near, my great grandfather to the hundred generation was nowhere near. God thought about me and began to paint a picture of redemption that I don't know about you but he said there is a boy by name Eric. He sins are too much. I need to come and swallow up sin and be made sin for him. So that he can become free. That's why he said authoritatively he that the son says free is free indeed. Listen every form of the magician work in your life. I declare that after today, it is over. I don't like your aim. I say it is over. It is over. He became sin. Sin has been defeated. By extension, death has been defeated. That's what the Bible said. He through death defeated him that has the keys of death. He defeated the devil. He, he, he frustrated him. He made a public show of him. So he shouldn't be your prayer topic anymore. Listen. I prophesy. After today, anytime you are walking, the devil is writing resignation letter. Concerning your life and concerning your family. I don't like your aim. I said concerning your life and your family. Who is that Pharaoh holding you in captivity? Who is that? We hope you have been blessed by this timely message. Make a date with us this and every Wednesday, 9 a.m. at the Living Fountain Baptist Church, Teshinongwa, near Fertilizer Factory. You can follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Prophet Eric O. Paske and on Instagram at Prophet Eric underscore O underscore Paske. Or you can call us on 054-714-120. See you in church.